Hi, this is Mans with Quest for a Farm, and today we are going to be making tallow. Um, it's the first time I've ever done it. I have been doing quite a bit of research on it, and I have decided that tallow is the way to go in terms of cooking from here on out. I'm probably going to try soap making with it. Um, my first attempt at soap making was a bit of a disaster, so um, I think that I'm going to give it a try again with a more solid fat. But that aside, um, white tallow. Firstly, it is loaded with your B vitamins, your fat soluble, the fat soluble vitamins, which is your A, D, E, and K. Um, it's got lots of trace elements and minerals, which your normal kind of sunflower, peanut, and canola oils don't really have. And um, one of the big um, positives for me is that it has an incredibly high um, smoke point of in excess of 200 degrees centigrade. So if an oil hits a higher smoke point than to or then you're cooking it at, the oil actually starts to oxidize and becomes not so healthy. So let's talk about the tallow itself. I got this from my um, local butchery. It is about 20 rands, which would be about a dollar-ish um, per kilogram. And you can see we just chose the ones that are it's uh, nice and white and it's already kind of broken up. Sorry, this is frozen, but it's already kind of broken. Oh, um, sorry, I don't like fat on my hands. Um, it's already kind of broken up into little pieces. So as it thaws, um, you'll see it's not a problem if you buy a big solid piece of beef fat or tallow or what have you. Um, you can just go right ahead and chop it up into little pieces. So... Here we go. I got about, oh, I think five packets of this. So basically what we're going to do is step one, this is a long ass process. So step one is we are going to try and cook it out or render it down, get it into its liquid form. You can see that's a little bit frozen, but not to worry. So I'm going to get it all in the pot. We are going to be putting water in the pot with, get in there. Um, with our tallow because the water is going to, in inverted commas, wash the tallow. I've done this with beeswax before, so I'm fairly confident in the results. Um, I've taken dirty beeswax, or I suppose it's not really dirty, but beeswax straight from the hive and done this kind of washing process before to get a solid beeswax. Um, and that worked beautifully, so I see no reason that this wouldn't. But that being said, we are going to put it in a pot. Um, it's imperative, of course, that you use a pot that is too small because, you know, who would want to use a normal size pot? We don't do normal in this house. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It will render down. And then with that, I am just going to add a little bit of water. Just enough to kind of cover the base. I don't know if you can see in there. It wasn't a huge amount of water, probably about 200 milliliters or so. And now you'll see as this starts heating up and thawing, it will render down into a liquid and the water at the bottom will be quite gross. So... I'll get back to you as soon as it's melted down. Okay, we are now on um, day two. So our tallow has been sitting out overnight to solidify. So if you can see that it's quite soft, actually. Um, it does... This still smell like almost a little bit beefy, but I'm pretty happy with it so far. So at this point, 
I feel like a lot of it would be good enough to cook with. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you it's floating on water. This is not just all tallow. So what I like to do is I like to dry it overnight on top of some water so that the water can kind of wash out any impurities. Um, as I say, I've done this before with uh, beeswax quite a lot. Um, beeswax is very different in that it goes hard, hard, hard. Um, I don't want to make a soap with my tallow in this state because, um, see, there you can see the water coming through at the bottom a little bit. I'm going to show you. And then I don't know if you can see the bottom of this block. The water's kind of washed it so it's looking nice and clear. So, see, there's maybe a little bit of impurities, but not a huge amount. Um, I'll show you now why I choose to, oh my God, it's hot around the edges. Why I choose to do this over water. You can see there's maybe a little bit of impure stuff at the bottom, which can just be wiped off but as I say we are going to give it another clean through it's much harder at the sides um I reckon one maybe two more washes and we should be good so as I was trying to say before I interrupted myself um cooking with the tallow as is would be absolutely fine yeah. um, but I want to use some of it to um, make soap with um, I, I'm doing a soap making video um, my soap I'm super excited has come out insanely well um, so Yeah, um, I'll link that video down the bottom here or something for you. And then just make sure you get all of these little bitties. Um, and kind of scoop them up. You can almost use the water to quote unquote wash them, pulling it off the sides here. As I said yesterday, I'm not the hugest of fans of getting my hands covered in grease, but if it's a necessary evil, it is. So you can see it's nice and soft and Pliable, I suppose, moldable. But like the consistency of Play Doh, I suppose. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, once I've got all of this out of here, is I'm going to wash out my pot and put it on for round two. Um, we are having our lawn cut in the garden today, so I will be using our inside kitchen. We don't want little bits of grass and stuff getting in there okay this is the stuff that came off yesterday um in south africa we you'd, you'd cook it a little bit more and we call it cayennes i don't know what it would be called elsewhere but they kind of go crispy 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 mm. and you eat them as snacks mm. Mm. The onion, and the tomatoes, they eat like a Onion and tomatoes. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So there you go. Maria says you add onion and tomatoes and it's delicious. Mm. <laughs> All right. I was going to use the same pot, just having washed it, but um, Maria told me no. <laughs> and she stole my pot. Um, so... 
we're just going to add this back. You can see it's nice and lovely and white, but you can see there's a few little bitties that we still ideally want to get out. Um, I was going to take some of it out for cooking, but I've decided I'll rather just run the whole lot through a second round. I'll probably then take half of it out for cooking and take some out. So from those five, uh, five or six little bags that we got yesterday, that's a decent amount. I will weigh it at the end and tell you how much we ended up with. But so far so good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take some warm water, add it in here, and put it back on the stove. So now I'm not going to cook it as long as I did yesterday because I'm not trying to render anything out of the fat per se. I'm now just trying to wash it, quote unquote. So you've got to add a decent amount of water because you must remember that water will boil off and fat will not. So we will check back in tomorrow. So we're going to boil it, put the lid on, let it cool overnight, and then you'll see me again tomorrow with our hopefully finished but possibly in need of one more wash tallow. Hi, we are back on day three and our tallow has been kind of cleaned twice. So um, this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see, it's nice and white and pure looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to get it out of this part. So I'm just going to loosen up the edges a little bit. You'll see the water start to sort of pop up through the tallow and I am going to start kind of dividing it up. So what I've decided to do is I am going to take some out for soap making. Um, I'll do another video. I do have a video on um, soap that I made. Uh, my first attempt was a failure, my second attempt was quite good. And um, then I will do another video on, because I used all liquid oils in that one, so I'm going to do another video on how I make soap with tallow and add some flavorants and colorants and all of that in. So I just found it easier to kind of cut it into little things. You can see the bottom of the tallow is not too bad, but there are a few little bitties that we can just scrape off. Um, it's kind of lost its beefy smell. doesn't smell bad at all. And pop it into our little bowl. Okay. Nice, white, pure. So, there you go, that one can go away. Okay, so this only required two washes. Sometimes if the tallow is a little bit, um, I don't want to say dirtier, but um, has more impurities in it, um, and you're finding this water is quite dirty or there's quite a bit of gunk sitting at the bottom of your tallow, you can just go right ahead and um, give it a third rinse. So if I weren't happy with this, I would put it back in my pot with fresh water and start again. So that being said, here is my tallow. I'm grabbing my little kitchen scale and I want 240 grams of tallow per candle making. Ah, so, and we can just, you can see it's quite soft, 
quite playable. So I reckon about half of my tallow is going to be the almost kilogram that I'm wanting. Whoopsie daisy. Okay. Because it's for soap making, I want to be relatively accurate. So I want 240 grams. Okay. And that I'm just going to put in little packets, which I have actually marked. And um, they'll go to a side. The rest of my tallow, I'm actually going to put back in a pot. And I'm going to boil it out. <laughs> my bread maker's just kicked in in the background. Um, and I'm going to kind of boil it and get rid of any water which may be trapped inside of the tallow or anything like that because we don't want water in our tallow. It can kind of spit back up at us. Oh, damn it. Um, when we're trying to cook. So your cooking tallow... You want completely clear. Your soap tallow is all right. Okay, thank you for watching. I'll pop back once everything's all sorted and show you what it looks like. Okay, so you can see here as we going and boiling it. Let me just zoom in a little bit. You can see those big bubbles plipping up to the surface. That is the water that was in and on the tallow. So as soon as all those bubbles stop coming up, I'll know that it's completely void of water. So we can then start um fixing it up and bottling it up so that it's ready to use. Okay, as you can see, it's stopped bubbling. So now we are going to just decant it into some glass jars. I'm not even bothering with mason jars for this one. I've just got some kind of upcycled old jars. Um, if you can see, they're standing here right next to my pot. That is because I wanted them to warm up a little bit. The temperature has just dropped off overnight. And last night we actually had a plate split in half or crack in half from putting hot food on it. So it's that time of the year that you've got to start warming glass up before adding heat to it. So now it's dead simple. Don't hold onto your glass while you're decanting when the tallow starts reaching finger level. Rather put it down because it's hot, hot, hot at the moment. So that's it. Now all that's left to do is continue decanting, preferably without killing yourself. And it really does not have a super beefy smell anymore. It's pretty... Okay, and then we are literally just going to pop that <clears throat> off to the side somewhere and let it come up to room temperature and solidify again and then we are ready to cook with this tallow which is far healthier for us and in general better. Okay this little half jar I am so from like probably just on a hundred rands worth of tallow I've gotten this looks like about 750 mils probably about 750 mils so 
maybe 300 miles plus an extra mm, 960 grams that I'm going to be using for soap making. So I'd say that's a pretty good deal considering a two liter of sunflower oil, which is far less healthy for you these days is costing almost the same. So it's almost a hundred rand for two liters of sunflower. I probably got just over a liter of cooking tallow and enough for four batches of soap. So I'm happy with the economy of it and I am happy with the health benefits and of course it'll be delicious. 